But one common thing we encounter um, when we get in here is people trying to turn the knee in, right? which is not a good move, but there's some logic behind it, right? So when I try the twist sweep, I want his knee to point out in order to off balance him this way, right? So what happens is people who are not super familiar with reaping, when I do this, Fred gets a bright idea. If he turns his knee in, I'm never going to be able to twist him that way. And that's true. It's very difficult. But from here, I can basically turn my body and force his knee to the mat here. Now that's, this is better for me because look at this heel. It's right there. You can't see his heel. His heel is here, he's exposing his own heel. And he can't hide it. If I'm good from here, I pinch my knees here, I put a little bit of tension in my legs. If the leg turns back, he breaks his own leg. All right, don't try to turn uh, back into the face. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's a dare, right? <laughs> There's money on the line. So the leg is forced to look away. You can only turn away from me if he turns in, he hurts himself. So when you're in this position, the flag is in, don't try to turn back. You have to turn away from the force. All right. So now I got the heel and it's all pretty sweet, but from here I need to finish him, right? I need to put some pressure on him because I'm not putting any pressure on Flag. Like he could, he has many counters where he can slip the knee out. Uh, sometimes he can just stay here. Sometimes he can sit his butt back on my leg here and I have no leverage to finish here. So we're gonna do a simple but effective uh, movement here. Let's just scoot a little bit out this way. Here, so look, I brought his knee to the mat. What I'm gonna do from here to stop most of the counters is I'm gonna, this leg was down here, I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna scissor my legs here, and I'm gonna think about extending with my back leg here, I'm extending, and I'm pulling in with this bottom leg here. So my knee here pulls a little bit in, and this one pushes a little bit. When Flalek tries to pull his knee out from here, it's very difficult. I'm pointing my knees to the mat, and it's very hard for him to pull his knee out. If he tries to sit back, it's hard because my hamstring is pushing against his hamstring. All right? And I'm not even applying the lock yet. If I'm also locked up tight here, and I'm starting to Put some pressure now I'm basically forcing him to roll so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to finish our partner here let's go all the way back and look at that scenario again so I'm here I try to twist sweep but like he's about to lose his balance so he turns his knee in look what I'm doing with my body here I'm turning to my side here letting my hips drop here so when my hips drop his knee touches the mat as his knee touches the mat I'm gonna take out my bottom leg and I'm gonna scissor. I'm gonna cross my feet and I'm gonna put that scissor pressure on. My hamstring pushes into his hamstring and my quad here pulls into his quad. I'm gonna cup the heel with two hands here. The flag tries to move out from here, tries to do those defensive moves. It's, it's very difficult. To finish him from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently, and I mean gently, don't spaz out with this. Pull his heel to my chin and I'm gonna open my chest and turn belly down here. So I'm getting good talk here, okay? Live, people are gonna roll, but we're gonna look at that afterwards. So you get to here, scissor your legs, put some pressure here, try to turn your knees to the mat so your partner can't slip out the knee. When it's time to go, lift the heel and think about turning your chest to the mat. Your partner should feel pressure through their foot and knee and tap from there. All right. And then at the end, we're going to look at what happens when people roll because they're going to roll to take off the pressure. Let's try that on three. One, two, three. So everybody looked, uh, seemed to get, get a pretty good grasp of this. All right. And it's very important also for safety standpoint that you know that when your knee's being reaped, you can't turn it back in. All right. Don't fucking do it. If you can do it, it's because your partner, either they're being nice with the pressure or they're just very bad at the move. If they're good at the move and um, 
they don't really care about hurting you. If you turn back, you hurt yourself. So we want people who are good at the move, but of course they're not looking to harm anyone. But still don't like get those false positives where you survive just because your partner's being nice. You shouldn't be an idiot like that. I'm just putting it plainly, because I'd rather you uh, being a little bit stern and you being aware than you hurting yourself, all right? So we go here, we try to twist, he turns out, we force that knee to the mat. Notice that when, we, when I go down here, I'm already curled up here. I start curled up. Because if I start straightened out, look how far down his heel is. It's, it's harder for me to get a good vibe. But when I'm curled up, the heel is nice and big. And now I create the extension with my own body. I put this pressure through, open my chest up, and I turn belly down here. Right? So if I just go here, slowly turn down, he doesn't move, he's done. So what most people are gonna do is they're gonna roll through. So as I put this pressure on, the flag to relieve it, he has to roll here. Do a good old rotation here. Here. So look how I land. I land on the side of my elbow here. All right. When now my legs are to the outside, so now I have better bridging potential, and also. If I can just take my foot off the hip before he could take that foot off the hip and that relieves a lot of pressure. Now my legs are locked. He can't really take the foot off the hip. If he tries to roll, I want to be so tight that he maximum only has one roll in him. But maybe he can try to roll once. Already here I got good pressure, but it's only going to be one more roll. Then when I land, I'm basically landing in my bridge here. All right. So let's take a look at the roll, because that's only really the, the only new movement we're introducing, right? We got the, all the other stuff down. So for the roll, right, here. For the roll, I want to make sure that I'm going elbow, forehead, and I'm landing on the other elbow. So I extend, look how it goes here, elbow, forehead, and look, I flare this elbow a little bit, so when I land, I land on the elbow. Here. There's a big distinction between being on your elbow and putting finishing pressure on and being on your shoulder. Here, I'm pushing Flex's toes a little bit more down, but I can't really generate a good lift on the heel. And here, it's easier for Flex to start to slip the heel out and be safe. So I want my shoulder off the mat, right? In demonstration, maybe it looks like this, where it's pretty far off the mat. When we're going live, sometimes it's closer. It's here, but it's still not touching. I don't want my side delt to touch the mat, All right? From here, make sure you curl in. You have to make sure you still have the knee curling in, and you already know the finish. It's the same as before, just with the legs to the outside. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that roll solo just for the circus act of doing it. So I reap, I lock up, I turn, elbow, look, forehead, elbow, roll through. So I end up here. So I'm only letting elbows and my forehead touch the mat. So the roll looks like this, elbow, forehead, elbow. All right, when I land, I have a good grip on the leg. I have everything I need for the finish. And when we just add that on. Last thing for today, let's try on three. One, two, three.